In this video, I'm going to discuss about ocean deposits. So these are unconsolidated, unconsolidated sediments derived from various sources deposited at the sea floors are called ocean deposits. The sources, main sources are terrigenous sources, which are which is derived from the continent and volcanic eruptions. So it could be oceanic or continental volcanic eruptions, the marine plants and animals, and decomposed marine plants and animals. So these are the major sources of oceanic deposits. So classification on the basis of sources of on the basis of sources of sediments, it can be classified into terrigenous sediments, volcanic matter and deposits, biotic matter and deposits, abiotic matter and deposits. So terrigenous deposits, first let's see terrigenous deposits. The so main source of terrigenous deposits of continental weathering. Because of the continental weathering, disintegration and decomposition of rock is taking place. Because of that, the size of the rocks and sediments becomes less. So it can be easily transported. Trans it can be easily transported via flowing river like river, rain wash, etc. They are acting as a transport agent to transport these sediments. Form of sediments, fine to coast sediments and coastal sediments are deposited near the coast near the coastal region. Fine sediments are deposited uh, coastal coarse sediments are deposited, whereas fine sediments signs of the finer sediments is less so that it can be easily transported into the sea. And the average addition of sediments per annum is solid matter is deposited, which is fifteen to twenty thousand million tons are deposited because the solid matter size of this is much more, whereas dissolved matter these are fine sediments. They are dissolved matter, so size of this less, so it is around 4,000 million tons per annum. It is deposited in, in the sea. On the basis of size, composition, and chemical characteristics, they are divided into gravels, sands, and muds. So gravels, which has a diameter of 2 mm to 256 mm, which are larger in size and further disintegrates by wave action. The subtypes of gravels are boulders, which is of 256 mm, cobbles, which has a size of 64 mm, and pebbles with a 4 mm size, and granules with 2 mm size. So the gravels can vary in different sizes. So depending upon the size, we can classify for them to boulders, cobbles, pebbles, and granules. Sands, which has a diameter of 1 mm to 1 by 16 mm, the side type, subtypes are very coarse sands, coarse sands, and fine sands. Very coarse sands has a 1 mm size, and coarse sands is 0.5 mm, and medium sands will have, which have 0.25 mm, and fine sands, which is 0.25 mm, and very fine sand sediments, so they can have a 0.0625 mm size. Then, silt, clay, and mud. The diameter of this 1 by 32 mm to 1 by 8192 mm. So they are very very finer sediments. So mud is finer than the clay. Mud types on it can be classified on the basis of color. So blue mud, red mud, green mud. So blue mud der derived from the rock rich in iron sulfide and organic elements. These are found at the depth of continental shelves and contains 35% of calcium carbonate. Whereas red mud derived from the rocks is rich in iron oxides and contains 32% of calcium car carbonate. Whereas green mud is derived from blue mud, blue mud. So when the blue mud is undergoing chemical weathering, so chemical changes, chemical weathering. So because of that, they transform into green mud in the sea water and contains 7 to 8% of silicates. Silicates of potassium and gluconate, whereas and calcium carbonate is 56 up to 56 percent. It can vary, so up to it can have up to 56 percent of calcium carbonate. Volcanic materials, these are formed by volcanic eruptions. It can be a continental one or oceanic one. If it is continental one, volcanic materials nearer to the coast, so they are called continental volcanic eruptions and they are transported via wind and rivers. And oceanic, oceanic uh, volcanic materials, they are directly deposited in the oceans and these resemble blue and grayish black in color. Organic materials, the major source is sea skeletons of marine organisms and plants. So the, after, after the decomposition, the, the, remains, the remains of these marine, marine organisms form the organic materials. And it is kind of characterized into two groups, neritic matter and pelagic matter. Neritic matter includes skeletons of marine organisms and plant remains like shells of molasses and skeletons of radiolaria, spicules of sponges, calcareous, siliceous plant remains. These are subjected to decomposition and chemical changes, so they are changed into mud and sand and deposited in seafloor. So these neurotic matter is further subjected to decomposition and chemical changes and they are they again transformed into finer sediments and sands and they are deposited into seafloor. 
next pelagic deposit they are consists of matter derived from algae are mostly in the form of liquid mud and generally known as oozes it is characterized on the basis of lime and silica content so these are characterized on the basis of lime and silica content so calcareous ooze which has calcium more and dissolves at depth are found at sea floor at the depth of 1000 fathoms to 2000 fathoms and subtypes are it has theropod ooze formed of floating theropod molluscs thin conical shells and which has thin conical shells and found in tropical oceans contains 80% of calcium carbonate whereas globigerina ooze formed of shells of flo foraminifera or form and they are formed of gems called globigerina and found in tropical and temperate oceans at the depth of 1000 to 2000 fathom whereas these theropod oozes found whereas calcareous ooze is found between 1000 to 10000 fathom but when it is go to deep when it is see depth they, they tend to dissolve in, in the water so these globi these globigerina ooze they are found between 1000 to 2000 fathom and contains calcium which is of 64.46% because here these theropod which is found ledges above the above in this uh, shallow waters we say 1000 fathoms which have more calcium carbonate at the deep when we go to deep it is going to dissolve this calcium content is going to dissolve so because of the calcium content decreases slowly so calcium is 64.46% silica which is of 1.64% and others which is 3.3% minerals Silicious ooze, which which has more silica and found at greater depths and in warm and cold water, silica is derived from a form of group of protozoa or radiolarians, and subtypes are radiolarian ooze formed of shells of radiolaria or foraminifera. Silica is more in this, and calcium also is present, whereas it decreases with increasing depth found at between 2000 to 5000 fathom in tropical oceans. So that's why it is found in greater depth. The calcium is there, but it is less in. whereas the calcium content is less because it tend to dissolve within the deep water diatom ooze formed of shells of very microscopic plants silica content is more in this calcium which has which it has a calcium of around 3 to 30% found in higher latitudes at greater depth inorganic materials these are precipitates transported from land to oceans or from within the oceans these are dolomite amorphous silica iron manganese oxide nodules and the phosphate barite gluconite and the feldspar clay minerals clay and minerals are those are red clay so this is important pelagic deposits covers largest area of sea deposits contain more radioactive elements so this red clay is more important because it has more radioactive elements in it distribution when we see so here we can see the at the greater depths so this is feet 0 this is feet 0 so when the depth is, depth is increasing so theropod ooze which has a 90% of calcium ca- carbonate so as the depth is increasing so here we can more calcium is there and the depth is increasing the calcium content is content is tend to decrease but silica content will be more when the depth is more silica content is more but calcium at the shallow waters shallow waters calcium content is more in the deep waters calcium content is decreasing here it is 90% here it is 20% At eighty thousand feet, it is a one percent calcium carbonate. So, like that, calcium content tend to decrease. So, within the water, depending upon the depth of water. So that's how the distribution of ocean deposits.